Hello and welcome back to Supernova. We will be continuing where we left off, which if you recall is in Super Fang's route. Obviously Super Fang is a tiger. I mean, I don't know why you guys even have to ask. <laughs> um, but yeah. So last we saw our main character here, the raccoon, whose name I forgot. Um, I think it's Nick. Um, he just realized how to bring out the armor and he realized that he can fly. And that he's strong when he's using the armor. So yeah. Like, woo! Um, so... Also, uh, Super Fang sent a text message to uh, the raccoon here. Basically telling him that today they're going to be starting their training. Or he's going to show them... He's going to show him something cool or something. I forget what exactly. But I assume it's going to be training related. So, yeah. Um, also, I believe the sprites for everyone got a little bit of a work, uh, work up, and uh, there's also new music and other stuff, so we'll both be seeing it for the first time, so yeah. Anywho, so without further ado, let's uh, continue Supernova. By the time I'm back, Lucas is sprawled out on the couch laptop on his lap, with a telenovela playing on the screen. He twisted his head around as I entered. Yo. Hey. Out on a run? Yep. I'm gonna shower now. Wanna watch this with me after? I glance at the screen. Lucas paused it on a scene of a Mexican wolf heroine seemingly making some impassionate declaration to someone off screen. Sure, why not? Just give me 20 minutes. It takes me about that long to wash off the sweat and dry my fur, and soon enough I'm on the couch next to Lucas. I'm usually not one for watching this stuff, but Lucas is way into it, and he updates me on what's happening often enough that I don't have a hard time following the plotline of the episode. It helps that the narrative is pure nonsense anyway. Wait, the cousin also has amnesia? Yeah, after that car accident. What? No wonder you think the crap that I write is good. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, nothing. Okay, one more before I go to sleep. Huh? This early? Yeah, a bit tired after that funeral, and I'm thinking of going to the gym in the morning. Speaking of which, come along with me. Lucas peers at me suspiciously. I don't feel like playing wingman right now. Wingman? What are you talking about? He rolls his eyes. Oh, just say it. Who are you trying to hook up with? What? No, I'm not trying to hook up with anyone. Not everything I do is about some guy asshole. Psst, yeah, right. I just need someone to spot me and some company. If you don't want to come, just say so. No need to be a jerk about it. Hey, calm down. I'm just teasing. Maybe. I'll come with you. What brought this on anyway? Do I need a specific reason to want to be healthy? I mean, you already jog plenty. I could stand to be a little stronger too. I thought you did push-ups or something in the mornings. Huh? How do you even know that? I can hear you grunting. Okay, but uh, how would you know I'm doing push-ups? I realize the mistake I've made before the smirk even appears on Lucas's muzzle. Ah, gotcha. I guess you're doing something else then. No, Ugh, I hate you. No, you don't. We're the bestest of friends. You're the biggest of assholes. Chuckling, he reaches to unpause the telenovela, but I put my paw on his wrist to stop him. Lucas turns to me again with a questioning look. If I had been in better shape, I could have done more, you know, back then. Dude, no. It wouldn't have mattered one bit how much more stronger you were. Not against someone like that wolf. Maybe not against him, but... You did as much as any normal person could have expected to do, so... Stop beating yourself up over it. 
That being said, if you want to be a swole raccoon, I'm not about to stop you. I laugh at that, even though I can't agree with what he said. There was more that I could have done to help. To help Templar, that is. Maybe if I had, he'd still be alive and I wouldn't be wearing this bracelet. As Lucas unpauses the video and relaxes in his seat, I'm left staring at the screen, barely paying attention to the subtitles. I could have drawn that wolf's attention to myself much earlier, given Templar an opening, or made that hit with a piece of rebar actually count for something. Any number of things I could have done instead of cowering somewhere out of sight. Nick? Yeah, uh, sorry. I think I'm just too tired. I'm gonna head to bed. Finish without me. Hmm, alright. Good night. Good night. Gym at 10? Sure. With a wave of my paw, I head into my room. Lucas is right about one thing. There's no point beating myself up over what happened. All I can do now is make sure that I can do better next time. Whatever training I get with Vince and the other Sentinels is sure to help with that. I let that thought lull me to sleep. It's been a while since I last came to the college gym. I made one attempt at it back in freshman year before having to give up due to the part-time job I had back then. In the end, I had to settle for those short exercise routines in my room that Lucas teased me about yesterday, as well as jogging daily. Lucas stands beside me as I examine the room, trying to decide what I want to tackle first. Got a workout plan? Nope. I didn't think about that. Too distracted with thoughts of whichever jock here you're trying to... I elbow him in the ribs and push him towards the far end of the room. Don't make me drop a barbell on you. Alright, I'll do arms today. I pick up a pair of dumbbells from the rack, decide that they're too light, and replace them with another pair. You didn't need me to spot you for an arms workout, dude. Company 2, remember? He shrugs and picks up a heavier dumbbells, stands in front of the mirrored wall, and starts doing curls. His biceps bulge every time he lifts the weights. I follow suit. Ever regret giving up lacrosse? Lucas grunts as he puts down the dumbbells as he rests between sets. Not really. I wasn't good enough to land a scholarship. It was mostly for fun back then. If you want to see me in action more, you should come play volleyball with us more often. No promises. I might be busier than usual after spring break. How come? I might be getting an internship soon. Oh, cool. Where? Small publishing firm. Nothing major. Hope you get it. Yeah, thanks. We get back to the workout. I feel a bit guilty lying like that, but the less Lucas knows, the better. After about an hour or so, and several more arm exercises, I feel fatigued enough that I can call the workout complete. Lucas parts way with me after we both shower, saying that he's gonna study with a couple of course mates. I head back to the dorm, trying to motivate myself to get ready for the econ exam I have scheduled for Thursday. Feeling at that, I instead lock the door again, close the blinds, and continue doing what I started yesterday. If I'm gonna use this power that I have now, I need plenty of practice. The first step is trying to figure out how to maintain my balance while flying. I do surprisingly well at that once I start floating up to touch the ceiling, then back down to the floor. It's fun enough to do that I only notice how tired I'm getting, and how much time has passed when Lucas pings me for lunch. Soon I'm comfortable staying in place midair, with no fear of tilting over and hitting the floor with my head. It's so exhilarating that my friends notice my good mood at the dining hall. I brush it off as being happy to be almost done with midterms. In truth though, I'm all but vibrating with excitement in anticipation of tomorrow's rendezvous with Super Fang. I squeeze in a tiny bit of studying in the morning, but as soon as I feel my focus wavering, I go back to armor shenanigans. By the time I get a message from Vince with a time and location for our meeting, 
I've discovered that I can make the helmet disappear while leaving the rest of the armor in place. There are likely tons of tricks to the bracelet, and what it does, but despite some progress I feel pretty lost. I wouldn't be surprised if I had to bite the bullet and ask Daniel sometime, assuming he'll even talk to me. That comes later though. The day flies by quickly. As darkness falls, I head out to take the subway downtown. Been said to meet him up at a fairly busy place, which I find a little surprising. Whatever kind of tour of the city he has planned, I assume we would want to be inconspicuous. There are office buildings all around me, and the street is pretty full. Apart from the corner I'm at, which features a closed shop and an entrance to a dead end. I peer into the dark alley with suspicion, unsure if it's the right place. After double checking on my phone, I shrug and stand by the wall, waiting for the tiger to appear. I imagine we'll go somewhere else from here, although if he was gonna pick me up with his car, he could have just done so my near my dorm. The clinic he works part time at isn't close to here either. Night. I barely enough time to open the browser on my phone again when I see Vince turn the corner, jogging in my direction. He waves as soon as he sees me, and I wave back while putting the phone back in my pocket. Yo, how's it going? Hey Vince, slow down a little, you don't need to run. Grinning, he scans the street, then winks and walks past me, with his typical bouncy steps straight into the alleyway. Uh... I follow him, not quite sure where he's going. The place gives me the creeps. It doesn't even go that far, about 20 yards or so before hitting a dead end, but I can feel shivers running down my spine as we retreat from the bright lights. Uh, you know, normally, if invited to a place like this, I'd expect either to be shanked or asked to perform a, um, special favor. Vince, who's standing at the end of the alley now, gives me a confused look, then laughs. Oh gosh, no, sorry, I thought it'd be more fun to show you instead of just explaining. Here, look. He's pointing at a spot right next to the dumpster. My vision is good enough in dim lighting that I notice an odd-looking panel there. In any other circumstance, I'd assume it was just a stain on the wall, if I even bothered with a second glance. But I see now what he's talking about. Seeing realization dawn on my face, Vince smiles wider and presses his paw on it. At first, nothing happens. But then the panel flashes, and the concrete underneath moves to reveal a short staircase. Whoa, neat. Yep, go on in. He urges me forward. A heavy metal door greets me at the bottom of the stairs. Its edge is lit with a faint blue light. Noticing another panel on the wall next to it, I press it. The doors swing open, and I emerge into what seems like a tiny sentinel's hideout. Vince is right behind me, and he goes through the door. I see the concrete slide shut at the top of the stairs. Figured you'd need to know about all the safe houses. They come in very handy. Yeah, it's cool. Could have have chosen a better place to hide it, too. That alley is fucking creepy. Oh, yeah, sorry, I think that's because of the device Lila installed. It plays this inaudible low-frequency sound, but makes most species feel uncomfortable, so they stay away. Huh. Who's Lila? Right, you haven't met yet. I'll introduce you guys. It's Copycat. Wait, what? I thought Copycat died in that fight against... Uh, who was it? Doom Beast? Nah, she faked it. Wanted to retire. But she still helps us out a lot. And she's really cool. Copycat was a co-founder of the Sentinels, along with Templar and Unbound. But everyone thought that she died uh, about seven years ago. Wasn't expecting to hear that she's still around. Something clicks in my head. Was she the cat you were talking to after... outside the cemetery? Yep, I wanted to introduce you to, actually, but then Baron snatched you to speak with Greg, and... I guess it also wasn't the best time. I'll look forward to meeting her. Yeah, soon. <laughs> Nodding at him with a smile, I give this safe house a closer look. Can I assist you, Templar? Gil's voice makes me jump. Jesus, Gil. Wasn't expecting you here. Gil doesn't respond to that, while Vince lets out a quiet chuckle. Gil is everywhere we go. 
I have no physical presence at this facility, Super Fang. Oh, you know what I mean. Vince crosses the room and presses some glowing buttons on the wall there. A thin, tall shell slides out with a hiss, revealing Super Fang's costume. Usually I wear it under my shirts, but I'm more careful when I have to be at the clinic. He leans down to untie the shoelaces of his sneakers, then takes them off before starting to unbuckle his belt. I blink in confusion before realizing he's wearing the bottom half of his costume underneath. So we will be going out there after all? I ask as Vince starts unbuttoning his shirt. Of course, I promised you a tour of the city, didn't I? We just need the right vantage point. He winks as the shirt comes off. That's quite a view. Funny how his tight-fitting costume leaves little to the imagination, yet seeing him without it still makes such a difference. And I've never been one to refuse eye candy. It's pretty much the only reason I ever go to the beach. So don't mind if I do. What if you need to change on a short notice? Do you, like, find another alleyway or an empty bathroom? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have to. I try to put my regular stuff in my backpack if that happens. Then it's just a matter of remembering where I hid it. You're lucky you don't have to worry about that stuff. True. Well, except for the shoes. I don't think the armor adjusts around my clothing, so I can't be wearing anything too bulky. Make sure to hide them well, then. At least this costume is nice and compact when it's in my bag. The very first one I had was like a dang parachute, since I needed to grow into it when transforming. I snicker as I imagine Vince pushing his head through an oversized piece of cloth. You know, you could have just gone shirtless. Believe it or not, I did that the first few times, before I stitched the outfit together. Oh Vince, I have absolutely no trouble believing that. He's not exactly shy about his body. Not that I'm complaining. Wait, so you've been wondering, how does a costume even survive when you grow? It's real stretchy. Here, try. He holds up the costume for me. I give it a good pull. The spandex stretches easily without losing its tightness. Did Copycat make this too? Yep. And everyone else's? The Baron makes his own equipment, but with everyone else? Yeah. She's had a hand in all of them. She's a genius, man. I can tell. Awesome. Vince pulls the shirt over his head, pulls his casual clothes, and puts them into his messenger bag before fishing out his mask. Has she added any special features to it, besides accommodating your varying size? Mm, no, I don't think so. So you could go shirtless without losing out on anything. Well, I like wearing my logo. I laugh at how earnest he sounds, and after a moment, Vince joins in. Alright, fair enough. I'm curious how your logo ended up on others' costumes, though. Oh, that. The tiger scratches the back of his head, still smiling. Don't know. Nisus and the Baron didn't bother with their own logos, so I thought it'd be neat if they had something. And I guess they decided to indulge me. You know, team spirit and such. So I'm not the only one who finds his earnest attitude adorable. Even the Baron. <laughs> well, enough about me though. Do you want to try suiting up now, or when we're outside? I look up, cognizant of the fact that Gil is listening to all of this, then lean in a bit closer. Actually, I have a pretty good handle on it by now. I may have practiced a little on my own. Despite my expectations to the contrary, Vince continues grinning. Hey, <laughs> couldn't resist, huh? I get it, it's very exciting. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Hold on, let me show you. Mimicking his earlier actions, I throw off my shoes, then winking at the tiger. I raise my arm, concentrate, and let the armor form around me. Its soft glow suffuses a dimly lit room leading it to a pleasant quality that wasn't there before. Vince's eyes widen as it finishes covering my body. He's giving my helmet a surprise look. Whoa, looks pretty different. Really good though, I like it. 
but I thought you said the armor wouldn't adjust. Oh, well, it was already like this the first time, and it's been the same ever since. Hey, I think it's awesome. Kind of intimidating, but in a good way. Make the criminals quiver. My chuckle reverberates inside the helmet. Alright, he took this even better than I expected. Can't imagine the Baron would be thrilled with this development. Nieces, I'm not sure, but probably not a fan either. Practice anything else? <laughs> Obviously, I couldn't just summon the armor and not try flying, right? I imagine. How did it go? Instead of a response, I let gravity fall away, and I float up several inches, where I remain arms crossed at my chest. I'm sure I look very cool right now. Or really goofy. Either is fine, if I'm around Vince. Nice. I drop to the floor with a clang. Guess that saves me the trouble of carrying you to the rooftops. <laughs> what? Were you going to carry me in your arms? Well, under my arm, to be precise. Like last time. Uh, uh never mind. Last time. Anyway, let me show off a bit too before we head out. Think this will be the first time that you see the real Super Fang up close, right? Yep. Grinning, Vince closes his eyes. Abruptly, his muscles bulge, as if he's straining every muscle in his body at once, even though he's standing perfectly still. There's an odd sort of squelching sound that makes me a bit nauseous as his body starts expanding, his limbs elongate and grow thicker, while his blonde hair retreats to give way to a wild growth of fur and two enormous fangs descend from his upper lips. The transformation is very quick, however, quicker than the time it takes me to summon the armor. Now I've seen Super Fang like this before, in pics or videos, but standing next to him is a whole different experience. That... isn't it painful? It is. Don't worry, I've grown accustomed to it. Nothing I can't easily handle. He towers over me, seven feet in height, if not more, and almost twice as wide as his normal self. Were I seeing this monstrous form as a shadowy silhouette somewhere in the dark, I'd be terrified. But I'm looking at his smiling face right now, and it's not even remotely intimidating. He just looks too endearing. Well, what do you think? You look... very cute. What? I nod my head, grinning. No, come on, look, I'm huge! Look at these fangs! He taps them with two clawed fingers to emphasize his point. But I continue smiling. Nah, sorry Fang, they look adorable, and I just want to pet your fluffy head. Letting his arms fall to his sides, he stares at me with a bemused expression. At that, I can't restrain my laughter. Alright, alright, how about this? If I was a criminal, I'd be trembling from head to toe right now. The tiger narrows his eyes in suspicion, then nods and smiles back at me. Good. Alright, let's do this. You ready? Yup. Gil, is the coast clear? It is, Super Fang. Excellent. Let's go. The heavy metal doors open again, letting in the chill night air. We ascend into the darkness of the alleyway, all while making surprisingly little sound considering Vince's current weight or the fact that I'm wearing metal on my feet. Again, our surroundings are illuminated by the soft glow of the armor. I like it, but I must admit it's not great for stealth. Not that Templar seems like he was made for stealth in the first place, but it wouldn't hurt to be able to tone it down, something to practice, I suppose. Vince points up towards a fire escape hanging off the taller of the two buildings. See that landing up there? How about you try getting up there? And don't worry about falling, I'll catch ya. I observe my destination, two or three stories around 30 feet from the ground. Doesn't seem so bad. Don't fail me, armor. Are you gonna be taking those stairs? Nah, I'll jump. He slaps his powerful thighs. Yeah, I imagine those carry him pretty far. Okay, here we go. He flashes me a grin and a thumbs up. 
The glow around my ankles intensifies and I'm lifted off the ground. Careful. Careful. It's just a matter of maintaining my balance. Just like I've been doing. It's no different from before. I'll just be flying up 30 feet instead of 3. No biggie. The ascent is slow at first. Almost painfully slow. But once I realize it's going just fine, I push it further. I'm still not sure what happens. It's as if the armor is simply listening to my mental command to accelerate. Landing on the fire escape, I turn around and look down at Vince. He waves at me. Nicely done. Move to the side a little. Huh? As I do, he leaps, and in a single bound, he lands right next to where I was standing, rattling the entire staircase. Jeez, Vince, you're too heavy. Nah, don't worry. I know exactly where I can and can't land. I've done it so much by now. The days when I accidentally crash into an office building are long over. Wait, really? Yeah, you should have seen their faces when a giant tiger smashed through the window. <laughs> uh, actually, it was really, really lucky I didn't hurt anyone by accident. Hey, I'm sure it was just a mistake. We can't make mistakes that end up hurting people. So yeah, I've been very careful since. Got in a bunch of trouble with Spec too. That was how I got into the Sentinel radar. I guess that's one way to get your name out there. <laughs> Please don't crash into a building if you can help it. Oh, I never intended to. Plus, everybody already knows Templar. Yeah. A shadow passes over his face, and he stares out towards the street. Before I can say anything else, though, he points up again. Do you think you can get all the way up? Yeah, I think so. I mean, sure, let's do it. I'll be right behind you. I nod, take a deep breath, and step off the platform into the empty air again. Then it's up and up again, towards the silver of the sky, visible far above, growing wider and wider as I rise. Superfang jumps between the two buildings in massive bounce, grabbing at ledges before each new leap. It's obvious he'd be doing this much faster if he wasn't waiting for me. Not for long, at least. The space opens up all around me, and my feet touch the rooftop. A second later, the hulking tiger appears next to me, crouching, with one hand on the concrete below. I let out a shuddering breath. That went well. <laughs> it wasn't so bad at all. No, it wasn't bad at all. It was awesome. Superfang stretches out to his full impressive height and claps me on the back. Soon enough, you'll be zooming all around the city. I glance down at the height. I just covered and I'm overcome by vertigo. Floating straight up is one thing. Flying over streets would be an entirely different matter. Um, I haven't tried anything like that yet. Worried? A bit, yeah. Is it hard? I imagine it was kind of like swimming. Well, I can't swim either, so... Y you can't? Yeah. But we live right next to the ocean. You never went swimming? Uh, a bit. I guess it was more just sort of walking in shallow water. Dunno, never wanted to. I shuffle in place as Vince keeps giving me a surprise look. The ocean's terrifying, okay? Who knows what's lurking under there? He laughs. Oh, come on, Nick. You aren't afraid of sharks, are you? Well, kinda? Ah. Can we get back to me flying? Um, yeah, but I do think that you should know how to swim. Why? The ocean? What if you need to fight above the water? Yeah, that's where the flying bit comes in. Come on. You know it's not that simple. I don't have the time to take swimming lessons, Vince. We could make it part of our training. I've got lifeguard certification. It'll be easy. Y you do? What? The certificate? Yeah, I got it in college. Worked a couple of summers to earn extra cash. Jesus Christ, Vince. How do you do so much stuff? Do you leave any time for, I don't know, a social life? Or simple rest? Uh, yeah, of course. I have lots of friends. 
but do you spend time with them? Yep. Really? Yes! Hmm. Okay. So... What? Swimming lessons? I sigh, exasperated. Not that I hate the idea, but the thought of going anywhere near deep water is making me mighty uneasy. Fine. Alright. Sweet! We can plan a trip to the beach sometime then. Sounds... uh... good. Alright, come over here. He jogs over to the other side of the rooftop and crouches down on one knee, looking out towards the city. I walk after him with slow steps, letting the view unfold as more and more of the city beneath our feet becomes visible. As far as the buildings downtown go, the ones we're standing on is average in height. Even then, with multiple skyscrapers dotting the sky, the busy urban expanse stretches on and on ahead of us, thousands of pinpricks of light in a lacework of unimaginable complexity. I can see the break where the hills overtake buildings, only street lamps to illuminate the road up to Salsford Park. To our right, meanwhile, the lights take an abrupt plunge into the dark depths of the ocean. My eyes are drawn to the cars in the streets below. They're tiny from this vantage. I bet they look even smaller when I'm flying over the city. I'm tempted to take a step forward into the emptiness and see for myself. In the corner of my vision, I see Vince, who's been watching me in silence, open his mouth to speak. I love coming up here, especially at night. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I've sort of seen the city like this before. We had that field trip to the broadcast tower one time. But it sure hits different now. I know, right? It's just such a special feeling to be perched up here like this. Must be nice seeing it all the time from those penthouses too, huh? I point to the lit windows on the top floor of a nearby high-rise building. Nah, come on. It's not the same. We're out here. You can fly. I can be over on that rooftop in a blink. Looking down on the city from an apartment isn't nearly the same. Plus, none of the people living in those do what we do. The Baron does. Psst. He doesn't live in a penthouse. He probably has one, though, but that's not the point. Chuckling, I look out to the city again. As pretty as it is, I can't help but shudder at how sinister the black crescent of the bay looks during the night. You really like doing this, don't you? Of course. Why wouldn't I? I mean, I don't know. You make it sound so easy. Nope, never said that. Just that it's fun. Putting yourself in mortal danger is fun. He waves his hand as if to dismiss my point, but a smile drops. That doesn't happen often, Nick. Most days we stop petty crimes, or assist firemen in rescuing people, or, you know, that kind of stuff. But it does happen. It happened. Well, you know. Vince looks at me in silence for several seconds. When he speaks, his voice is uncharacteristically somber. Are you afraid? Maybe a little. I'm gonna be right beside you, Nick. I fall silent, trying to decide how to put my feelings into words. I know. It's not... That's not the kind of fear I'm talking about. Ugh. It's hard to explain. What I mean is... I'm not exactly eager to die, but... Vince waits patiently for me to gather my thoughts, not saying anything. That's what's scary is having to do this as Templar, because, well, if I had just gotten superpowers, but I was nobody otherwise, I'd just be starting from scratch, right? And then it's okay if I fuck up a little. You'll do just fine. You have the bracelet for a reason, remember? Yeah. Vince's words aren't all that reassuring. If, and I'm starting to think it's a big if, the bracelet chose me like they said it did, then its decision-making process must have been arbitrary, because I don't feel like a hero. Not like any of the Sentinels. Definitely not like Super Fang. You don't need to be perfect. Nobody is. I know that, but you seem to have it all figured out. As far as superheroes go, anyway. 
You're doing pretty great, no? He looks away from me with a sigh. I'll take the win of hearing that Never Meet Your Heroes didn't hold true in my case. <laughs> I will the helmet to fade away like I practiced before. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I never really had any heroes. But really? How come? I don't know. This whole superhero thing never appealed to me from a fan standpoint. Somehow Super Fang seems more surprised by that than anything I've said so far. You didn't look up to any of the Sentinels? Maybe a little. Who? Damn, he sure seems curious. He expects me to say Super Fang, doesn't he? Well... I mean... He is, the, like, the more popular, more socially out there superhero. Templar is the one he's replacing. Nisus is the one that nobody knows that much about. They just know that he kicks butt, but they don't know how. Unbound... Um, I actually don't know much about a Unbound except for the fact that she can phase through things. And Baron in Black is sort of like, I'm assuming, Batman. <laughs> um, and that he can be abrasive to people that don't know him. And even people that know him think that he's a little intense, but, you know, he's he's well-meaning. He's probably the smartest out of all of them, too. It's probably, like, a toss-up between these two. Mm. <sighs> I'm just gonna go for the brownie points and say it's him. <laughs> Well, obviously, Super Fang was the definition of coolness before I even knew it was you. And, you know, the eye candy you post all the time didn't hurt. Vince's loud, exuberant laugh rings across the rooftop. Here I was hoping for a less shallow kind of fandom. It wasn't the main thing. He grins and winks at me. I'm serious, Vince. I bet a lot of people who have powers do nothing with them. Nothing important, anyway. You were different, and that's damn admirable. Uh, I... I see. Thanks, Nick. I put my hand on his massive shoulder and give it a brief squeeze. Either way, I think that's one of the best things about what we do. Give people something to look up to, you know? What, like role models? Nah, not like that. It's more like... When it feels like the world is trying to crush you. It helps to know that there are people out there holding up the sky. Fighting back the darkness. Fighting against those who are trying to make the world a worse place. I think there's great value in that, in heroes. I stare at him at a loss for words. What he says would usually elicit a sarcastic response from me. But there's a mix of sincerity, earnestness, and an odd sort of wistfulness in Vince's words. That I wouldn't dare say something disparaging. Hmm. Who was your hero? I feel compelled to ask who Vince used to look up to, or perhaps still does. Just praying he doesn't say Templar. That would be unbearably awkward. Do you have someone like that? A superhero that you look up to? He gives me a rueful smile. Would you be mad if I said all of them? I know it sounds like a cop-out. <laughs> yeah, it kinda does. Well, I mean it. Every new superhero I meet, I can't help but admire what they're doing. I wouldn't single any one of them out. I see. That's... pretty cool. I can't wait to meet them myself then. Oh, you'll love it. There are so many awesome people around here, not to mention the regional meetups and stuff. You'll see soon enough. But, well, this has gotten a bit more serious than I planned, hasn't it? Let's get this party back on track, shall we? Oh, you had more planned? I had been thinking of carrying you to the other safe houses. Carrying me? Huh? I look over the edge, my stomach drops, and I close my eyes for a moment, then look again, forcing myself to remain steady. I could try flying. Would you like to? 
I'll be with you every step of the way, ready to snatch you out of the air the moment anything goes wrong. That doesn't sound like something I'd enjoy, but I gotta do this sometime anyway, right? Uh, how about we try a couple of buildings for now, then go further if it's all good. Yeah, sure thing! He starts pointing across the street to another empty rooftop, then blinks and looks back at me. Ah, shoot, I forgot! Here! The tiger reaches into his pocket, which can't be easy with those claws. After digging around for a couple of seconds, he retrieves something and holds it up between his thumbs and index finger. It's a small device, oval, with a glossy black surface. Comms device makes getting in touch much easier and will come in handy for sure if you need me to catch you. Put it in your ear. It should stick. He hands me the device. Most of it is smooth but one side feels rougher to the touch and clings to my fingers. All right. I gingerly put it in my ear, but I can't find a good spot for it. After struggling for several seconds, I lower my paw. I'll do it later, when I can look in the mirror. Hmm, need help? It won't stay in place, and I want to make sure that it's not visible. Here, let me... I hesitate before handing the device back to him. The tiger gently grabs my right ear with one paw, then sticks the device into the fluff there with his other. It stays in place this time. They're all good. He gives me the briefest of scratches behind the ear, then steps back, smiling. I wonder if he felt the inside of my ear burning while he was doing all that. Those piercings look cute on you. Cute? My junior yourself would be very offended right now. It's supposed to make me look edgy and cool. Superfang spreads his arms wide, laughing. Well, too bad. We're both stuck with cute. I'm devastated. Heh. <laughs> to be honest, I was surprised when I first saw you with them. You didn't even remember who I was. No, that's not it. I just wasn't sure. It had been a while and you caught me in costume. It's fine. You're good. Anyway, I guess you graduated before I got the first, huh? You didn't get them both at once? Nope. The first was when I broke up with my first boyfriend. Well, he broke up with me more like. I got the second when I got accepted into college. Nice. The Pearsons. I mean, not the boyfriend thing. Meh. His loss. For sure. I scratched behind my ear, where Superfang touched me moments ago. Receiving compliments isn't rare for me, but it feels extra nice coming from him. How do I work this thing? Tap the base of your ear a couple of times, like this. Should work even when you're wearing your helmet. I follow his instructions, and I'm surprised to hear Gil's robotic voice. Can I assist you, Templar? Oh, this is what you meant when you said that Gil was everywhere you go. Yup. Alright, Gil, connect me with Templar. Hear me well? His voice booms in my ear, and I nod at him with a thumbs up. What about me? He returns the gesture. Excellent. Alright then, give me a moment to get ready before I try this fly thing, alright? Take all the time you need. He stands back, letting me take several calming breaths before I step back to the edge. With my mental command, the helmet forms back in its place. Calm down. After flying all the way up here, this will be a piece of cake. Closing my eyes, I take a step into the void. I'm suspended mid-air, hundreds of feet above the bustling street. I wobble a little, but force the panic out of my mind with a slow, steady breath, regaining my balance at the same time. All good, Templar? Superfang's voice is in my ear. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Looking back, I see him perched at the edge of the building, as if readying himself for a pounce. I give him a quick wave before turning back towards my destination. It's one thing to push myself off the ground to go up. Right now, I have n nothing like that, only my mind to command the armor. At least, I think that's what's happening when I start moving ahead. I'm probably supposed to be doing this in a more horizontal position, but I fear if I try to lean forward, 
I will just tumble all the way over and hang in the air by my ankles. If I even manage to not fall. So I float upright instead, as if standing on an invisible pair of skates. The goal is closer and closer. Doing good, buddy. Just a little more. Yeah, just a little more. And there. Only when my feet touch something solid again do I realize that I'm drenched in sweat. I make the helmet disappear so that I can feel the night air on my fur right as Super Fang lands with another thud next to me. Honestly, I don't get how you're so casual about leaping around all these heights. I at least have the safety of light. It's all about practice. Plus, my body's pretty resilient. Not that I want to fall from all the way here. Phew. Well, either way, I think we can leave the tour for another time. Best I can do right now is practice flying back and forth over here. Sure, practice however long you want. I won't be keeping you up much longer. Can't imagine anything more boring than watching me do this. Nah, come on. I'm here for you. Okay, okay. Well, here we go. So for the next hour or so, I practice while Vince keeps a watchful eye on me. We chat over the comms device in the meantime, with me telling boring anecdotes from my life and the tiger regaling me with stories from his superhero career. It's pretty fun to be ranting about how my nerdy-ass high school boyfriend decided he was too good for me as I float over the gap between buildings. The chatter does distract me from my nervousness, enough that I do it with more confidence, even slipping into the casual flying pose by the end. Another night like this, and I could indeed be darting around the city. By the time I'm lowering myself back into the alleyway, what should have been a terrifying process becomes almost fun. Almost. But I manage. Alright, so I'll be off work earlier tomorrow. I think we should meet up at the HQ. Maybe have Gil put a combat training protocol together for us? Yeah, that should be fun. I just have one exam in the morning. I'll be free after that. You have an exam tomorrow? Yeah, econ. Why didn't you mention that before? We could have waited until later to do this. Meh, I'm pretty sure I'll be failing the test either way. Been thinking of dropping the course for a while now. You could at least try to pass. I will, but I also don't care if I don't. This right here is more important, no? Well, I guess, yeah. Is there nothing that I can do to help? What, with the test? Nah, I'll text you when I'm done, though. Hmm, okay. Well, since we didn't see it tonight, tell Gil tomorrow to guide you to the other downtown safe house. It has a tunnel going up all the way to the HQ, makes getting there much easier. Nieces use it all the time on his motorcycle. Whoa, neat. I've been wondering if there was something better than the uphill road. There you go, then. The tiger finishes putting on his casual clothes, and we head back out to the main street. I assume you didn't come here by car? You kidding? I couldn't find a parking space here to save my life. I'll be taking the subway. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason I didn't drive here either. We can head to the station together, although I'm going the opposite direction. Sounds good. Vince's train arrives before mine, and I bid the tiger goodbye waving at him as he steps into the mostly empty car. Soon enough, I'm back at Rifton, exhausted, sleepy, but very happy with how the evening went. I think that sound should have stopped. Either that or I'm reading too fast, which I doubt it. There we go. Actually, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. So I think that's a good enough amount of time. And based on how much uh, content was written for Super Fang, that should be a good stopping point, I think. So yeah. So that was a nice interaction between um, Nick and Super Fang, or Vince, I guess you call him. Also, <laughs> Vince is um, big puffy, like, super form does look pretty silly. 
silly in the way that it's like it's a I guess it is supposed to look terrifying to bad guys. But if you already know him, it just looks goofy. <laughs> but like not in a bad way, okay? I'm not criticizing it. It just looks goofy. But yeah, anyways, um I suppose this is sort of like a like uh the Hulk sort of sort of situation, but sort of like the Professor Hulk instead of the actual big Hulk where he just increases in size. He still remains as um, uh, as smart as ever. Or, you know. But yeah, um... But yeah. Anywho. So, um... So what do you guys think so far? Do you still like the story? Do you like, um... The fact that you now actually get to see Nick's uh, full armor? And I think it's pretty cool. And despite how goofy Vince looks when he's powered up, it's still pretty cool too. And obviously, the whole Super Fang thing, like, you know, the fangs, that that's his thing, that they grow out. I, I hit the mic. But yeah. I, I honestly, for some reason, I'm having like a mental image where he already had the fangs. I don't know why. So I'm like... Oh, that's why they call him Super Fang, because they grow out and they're large. They're, he turns into like a saber tooth you know, kind of like kind of thing, you know. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah. So we finally get to see Super Fang's powered up mode and we get to see Nick in his armor. I wonder if it's possible for the armor to change depending on what the person wants it to look. Or if it has like just a default... Um, way that it looks, depending on the species, because I think the original, well, the Templar that came before Nick had a bit more of a medieval armor look to it, and Nick's armor looks a bit more, um, like, more like modern armor, kind of. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if Nick can change it back to um, how it used to look, at least for the previous Templar, or if it just, if this is the way that it's going to look for him. If, you know, the writer, the creator, you know, is listening, maybe you could answer that. But yeah. <laughs> Goofy little Vince. I'm, I'm happy that I picked Vince for YouTube, because he is, he's more... Approachable, I guess? He's like the people's superhero. Nisus is more like the, the guy that just, you know, does his own thing. You know, he'll help you, but, you know, it's like after he's done, he's gone. And the Baron is... I I still maintain that he gives me Batman vibes, because he, he made his own suit. I don't think he has powers, and I think the suit, like with uh, Nick, is his main thing. And since he has sort of a steampunk look, I think he makes his own gadgets too, I guess? Probably. And then there's this girl back there. <laughs> I don't know anything about her yet. Because she isn't someone that you get to pick. But yeah. <sighs> Anyways, um, also, it's funny how um, Nick's armor glows. He's basically a glow stick. <laughs> it's funny and uh, not like a, like, haha, you're a glow stick. But more like in a, he's like a beacon in the night t type of thing. And he even glows in the picture or the video thing that's like right here. But anyways, um, so that was, I guess, the first part of being able to hang out with uh, Vince. Obviously, there's more, you know, there's, there's more after this. I'm just trying to keep this all under like an hour. But yeah. So, uh, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Supernova yourself, you can find it over on Itch. And you can find a direct link to the... Well, the Itch page from the Supernova Twitter page, which I will link down in the description. And... I don't remember if they do, because it's, it's been a while. But if they have any sort of, like, Patreon or coffee or whatever, I will link that down in the description as well. And I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.